Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how I painted the reddish tones and soft value transitions in this Vizsla Puppy pet portrait using watercolors. For this project I have my silver black velvet size 4 and size 8 round brushes, my Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White, and I have 6 colors on my palette, Burnt Sienna, Alizarin Crimson, Gamboge Nova, Turquoise Blue, Ultramarine Blue, and Indigo. My paper is my Fabriano Artistico 140 pound cold pressed cotton watercolor paper. I'm starting with the wet and wet technique for the body of the dog, just taking my larger size 8 round brush and spreading clean water all over the dog's body, even extending it to the edges of the paper. This will allow for softer edges wherever I apply the paint. My first color is a combination of yellow ochre and burnt sienna, slightly diluted, and I'm applying it everywhere I see darker contrast in the dog's fur, particularly underneath the legs and along the sides of the chest. Anywhere you see shadow tones, that's where you want to apply your first layers of paint. And using wet and wet is so effective because it allows the paint to just spread out so softly and naturally on the surface of the paper you have to do very little blending when you use this technique. And the more you apply pressure on your brush, the more paint is released, creating a darker effect within the fur. You can even allow for slight blooms to happen, creating the effect of fur texture, and just keep increasing your values by applying more paint while it's still wet. You can apply numerous layers wet and wet before your paper dries, and this is such an effective way to build up layers quickly and efficiently and in a soft way. I'm using mostly burnt sienna for the tones in this dog's fur, and as it's beginning to dry, you can see the paint is sticking a little bit more. It's not softening out or diffusing as much, and this is your opportunity to begin adding fur texture already in this first wash. I'm darkening up the center of the chest and really darkening the shadow tones underneath those legs. To soften value transitions, I go from dark to light by just removing some paint on my paper towel and then swiping along those edges that I lay down. Now I can begin adding some details under the mouth. For more chocolatey brown, I just mix in a little bit of ultramarine with my burnt sienna. You can actually see some of the pure tones still in my brush here as I'm applying it under the mouth. And then of course dilute the color a little bit more in areas that are lighter in value. And you can soften as much as you need to. Just make sure you don't have too much water in your brush. And if you do, you can always either spread it out more on your paper or remove it on your paper towel before proceeding. The enemy of watercolor is too much water. So that is what you're gonna be constantly controlling when you're painting with watercolor in order to get the effects that you want. I'm increasing the dark values along the neck here and the jowls just by adding more burnt sienna wet on wet in that area that I pre-wet with that wash of ultramarine and burnt sienna. Again, this is my favorite method for really building up rich layers without having to do a whole lot of manual blending. This darker brown combo is just burnt sienna and ultramarine. If you want it to look a little cooler, just add more ultramarine. And if you want it to be more of a reddish tone, make sure your ratio is heavy on the burnt sienna. With the body pretty much mostly done, I'm going up to the head now and starting with wet and wet again, still using my size eight round brush to apply clean water all over the face, particularly focusing on the ears. Once again, I'm reaching for burnt sienna. It's really the perfect color for the reddish tones of this Vizsla dog. I'm using pretty much pure burnt sienna wet and wet to paint those darker creases in the ear, removing some paint, and then swiping along the areas that are lighter in value. Already we have a two-tone contrast right there in the ear. With that lighter tone, I'm covering the whole face and then already beginning to boost some of the darker tones, just using more pigment and less water. If you feel like this video is moving a little bit too fast, good news, it is available in real time. Just head over to emilyolsonart.com where you can sign up to be a member of my Watercolor Mastery Membership. Included with your membership are over 130 real-time fully narrated tutorials, which all come with a downloadable reference photo and line drawing and a complete list of supplies used in each project. I'll leave a link in the description so you guys can check that out. All right, let's get back to this video. I'm covering up the entire nose even with this light wash of burnt sienna. The only areas I'm avoiding for now are the eyes since those are gonna be a completely different color. Working wet and wet, you can darken and use all these different varieties of light tones and mid tones so effortlessly just by controlling how much water's in your brush. You can even do gentle lifting. Now for the eyes, I'm actually using a little bit of my Gamboge Nova and some turquoise blue, which when you drop in on top of the yellow, gives the effect of green eyes. And then alizarin crimson is the perfect pink tone for surrounding those eyes. 
I'm slightly diluting it underneath the eyes. And then for the black areas, I'm using pure indigo and I've switched to my smaller size four round brush. I also use a diluted version of the indigo for the shadow tones within the eyes themselves. Make sure that the yellow is completely dry before adding these shadow tones and avoid the pure white highlights just over the pupils. Once you add the eyes, your portrait is gonna start looking so lifelike. Now for the snout, I'm using a little bit of indigo mixed with my burnt sienna to darken underneath the mouth and to create that dark crease in the nose and also begin to paint those whisker pads. I'm not being super specific with every little dot. I'm creating sort of these curved lines ending in a couple of more specific dots. The first color on the nose here is alizarin crimson. It's just a pure diluted wash of pink. I've left a little highlight on the left and then I'm slowly building up layers wet on wet using burnt sienna and ultramarine if I want it to be more of a chocolatey brown or darker in those nostrils. And now I'm continuing to build up layers on the face. We're working wet and dry now. For some of these wrinkles, it's most effective if you want your paint to just stay put when you lay down a brush stroke, use soft diluted washes and layer them one on top of another and use a darker value for the wrinkles themselves. But try to create transitions where you have a dark value, a medium value and a light value for the most effective and 3D looking wrinkles on a dog's face. I'm adding another loose wash across the chest, pretty much pure burnt sienna here, slightly diluted and using my small round brush, pushing and pulling the paint in areas where I want it to be just a little bit darker, like on the left side of the body, right here above the eyes. As we slowly build these layers, it's starting to look so much more beautiful and complex. Now we can begin adding those final details using our pops of indigo under the eyes and under the nose. And I need to bring the right side of the face up to the same color and value as the left side. You can see I'm working slowly using the belly side of the brush to flatten out those tones. And adding a couple final details to the eyes, increasing the red underneath them with my alizarin crimson and a little bit over the top of the right eye too. I like to jump back and forth between left and right just to ensure that I have a nice balance between the two eyes. Now I'm really boosting the saturated color in the face using pretty much pure burnt sienna here, increasing the values of those wrinkles. And you can see because we added those softer layers underneath, we're seeing a beautiful variety in values from light to dark. I'm boosting the shadow tone underneath the ear and then adding a tiny hint of fur texture above the eyes. For short haired dogs, you really don't need to add a ton of fur texture, just a tiny little hint of it here and there with some of the separated bristles of your brush are really all you need to create effective fur texture. Now for the ears, I've actually mixed in a little bit of alizarin crimson for more of that pinkish tone. And then to finish up the nose, I'm using pure indigo to paint those perfect little circles for the nostrils and the lines underneath the nose, darkening up the corners of the mouth and then mixing in a little bit of burnt sienna and spreading out the bristles of my brush to paint some fur texture right under the mouth. Make sure to get those soft jowls and to really boost the values under the neck so that the head looks like it's coming forward. And here I'm spreading out the bristles and adding just a hint of fur texture to the face, boosting a little bit of the color between the eyes. And for a final detail, I'm gonna add whiskers using my pure white. This is my Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. I'm using a tiny Arteza liner brush and there really aren't that many whiskers on a Vizsla dog. They're very short, but it's so effective to add this finishing detail. And you can even add a couple little highlights on the nose and underneath the nostrils. And don't forget those little whiskers right under the mouth. You can also use your white while you have it on your brush to add a tiny bit of shiny fur texture within the fur itself on the chest and on the ears. So there's our finished Vizsla puppy dog. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. You can use all six of these colors that are on my palette to paint just about any pet portrait imaginable. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.